Hello everybody, my name is Henry Tenby and welcome to this edition of Model Moment. A special welcome to all my Canadian, my fellow Canadian aircraft display model collector friends. We have a very special Canadian edition today and we've got with us a vintage 1960s Pacific Western Airlines Boeing 737 that was produced by Pacific Miniatures in approximately that time, I would say 1968. So here we have it. It's a one piece fiberglass model. It's 1 60th scale, measures about 20 inches long with a similar wingspan. And I'm gonna start with a little bit of history on these aircraft. Now Pacific Western Airlines, as some of you might know, was a Canadian regional airline that dated back uh, through to the 50s and 1940s uh, serving primarily points north out of Edmonton and British Columbia, all the way up to the Northwest Territories, and they were active in the construction of the Dew Line uh, that spanned the High Arctic uh, during the period of the Cold War. And by the mid-1960s, it was evident that their prop liners would have to be upgraded with jet equipment, and the aircraft that was deemed most suitable to replace the DC-4s and 6s and C-46s and DC-3s, etc. Uh, and would give the company the most latitude in both the freight and the passenger markets was Boeing's then brand new 737-200. Now you'll notice this model has a cargo door depicted and uh, Alaskan Airlines and Canadian Airlines, I should say airlines that were based in Alaska and airlines that were based in Canada, were uh, very much inter interested in the main deck cargo doors because they could configure the aircraft as varial, variable position combis, which means there was a, a 9G barrier uh, and smoke barrier that could be moved to variable positions within the fuselage to allow freight up front, passengers in the back. And uh, this particular airplane, when, this, when the Boeing 737-200 was first introduced, it had a maximum uh, maximum brake release weight, of, I believe, of around 110,000 pounds with the original Dash 9A engines. But as the decades progressed, Boeing was able to upgrade the performance on the aircraft. And uh, with the latest, I believe, the Dash 17 engines increased the maximum brake release weight up to close to 127,000 pounds. So the aircraft did evolve quite significantly. And even today, here in Canada, 737 combis, 200s, are still earning their keep some 50 years after the type was first introduced. So Pacific Western Airlines, which was then based in Vancouver, Russ Baker Way, at YVR, ordered, I believe, uh, four or five 737-200s from Boeing, I guess it would have been in the mid-1960s, and the first aircraft to be delivered uh, from from Boeing to, C to in Seattle to Vancouver was this exact airplane, CF Papa Whiskey Delta, PWD. And PWD was delivered in 1968. But the interesting thing is that it was not a main deck cargo door equipped aircraft. It was actually a full PAX airplane. And uh, these aircraft went into service on scheduled routes in BC and Alberta and linking Alberta, Edmonton, Calgary, up to Yellowknife, Norman Wells, etc., And they were operated as combis as soon as the combis came online. And they served the intra-provincial routes in British Columbia and Alberta to smaller points, such as Kelowna, Penticton, Castlegar, Campbell River, etc., Nanaimo, Victoria. And they would... Uh, go on to become quite famous because of course as we all know Pacific Western went on to order a large number of 737-200s as did Canadian Airlines or CP Air as they were known back in the late 1960s. So PWD was not a, a, a combi. The very first combi uh, that was delivered to Pacific Western was actually w Whiskey Echo, PWE, which was delivered in nine, one year later, 1969, along with PWM, Mike. So those two, another two Boeings came in 69 and then Charlie 
Papa Whiskey Charlie was delivered in 1970. And as we all know, or many of us know, that aircraft was written off several years later, quite tragically. But this model was made, I am going to presume, at the request of the Boeing Airplane Company as a promotional piece to present to Pacific Western Airlines. It was made by Pacific Miniatures. Today, Pacific Miniatures is, is, has been rebranded. They are known as Pac-Men. And, but back then they were Pacific Miniatures. They had already been in business uh, probably 15 or 20 years and were already well established in providing models to the military industrial establishment in the United States. And they produced airline models as well. Now, if you are a co serious collector of travel agent models, I'm going to recommend that you might consider my book. It's the Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide, which I have produced. It's 162 pages of glorious color. And I have a chapter entirely devoted to Pac-Man and Pacific miniatures and their, their beautiful models. So you might consider my book. You can purchase it and get details on my website, henrytenby.com. So let's have a look at this model. It's a beautiful piece. It's in great condition. It is on the original walnut base, I believe, that was supplied with the model, it's a large, large footprint there. And the model was made of fiberglass, inlaid fiberglass. And those of you that are fans of the 737, you'll notice that we've got the short, the short pipes here. These were the very first Boeing 737 engine nacelles on the aircraft that were delivered in 68. Within a year, I, I believe, well, Lufthansa had the same short pipes on the 37s as well, on their 737-130s. But very quickly, Boeing lengthened the thrust reverser and nacelle assembly backwards. And we, we had the 737 engines that we all knew through the 1970s. But this model depicts the original engine configuration. As you can see, it's, it's quite different than what most photos depict for 737-200s in the 70s and beyond. And this model, it's got a slight, very slight yellowing patina, but I've seen a lot worse. There is absolutely no trauma on the model. She is in lovely condition for her 50 years. Uh, we should all be in such nice condition at 50 years of age. And I, I really love this color scheme. The, 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 we've got the mustache on the tail. We've got the mustache up, up front. It's a simple, basic color scheme, but it is just so classy, isn't it? Uh, you know, this simple blue cheat line below the windows. This scheme was carried, as many of you know, on the Hercules, the Convairs, the Convair 640s, the uh, DC-6s, the DC-4s, and the 707s that PW acquired in the 1960s to operate their IT charters uh, from Canada to Europe and, and the Caribbean and Hawaii, etc. And this scheme was a beautiful scheme and it was replaced by the full blue scheme that took the, the blue tail all the way down, tapered to the front. Uh, that was introduced, I believe, in about 1972 or 1973. But look at this model. She is a beauty, a real stunner, I must say. We've got the lines are all good on our dihedrals, on our wing and our main wings and stabs. We've got no bends. We've got no cracks. We've got no serious impacts. We've not, we, we don't have any ground handling equipment ramp rash on this model. She is looking super pristine. And these are quite common in terms of, you know, the 160th Pac-Man models. They do show up in typically U.S. airline liveries and, uh, you know, Lufthansa. Uh, but the Canadian stuff is really quite rare. These models were produced for Nordair, Eastern Provincial, CP Air, Pacific Western, Quebec Air. They're out there. But in all my years of collecting, you know, some going back about 40 years now, almost 40 years, this is the one and only Pacific Western white original 1968 era model that I have ever seen or had the pleasure of owning. And they just don't show up. They're, they're as I say, the American airline 
uh, liveried versions of this model are a lot more common than the Canadian. And us Canadians are very appreciative of these models and value them very highly just because of their rarity and their beauty and their historic value. I mean, this model, yeah, I, re I really, really like it. It's a centerpiece for my collection. It's not a model that I would envision getting rid of or selling, unless, of course, an offer was made that I couldn't refuse. I really am impressed with the shape of the model. For, for 1968, they really do have the shape right. The lines look good on the model. The nose, it's always the nose that sets a model uh, apart from the, the, the good and the bad. If the nose isn't right, then the whole model is, is tainted, in, in my opinion. And I think others would agree with that sentiment as well. Look at the cockpit windows. You've got the anti-glare shield looking really nice there. That's awesome. What's, what is unusual is that not all models, actually most models that were produced over the decades for, man, for manufacturers to present to airline customers did not have registration. So the fact that this model actually is decaled with CF PWD, I find that to be really a really special and nice touch that adds value. It enhances the historic interest in the model and is something that we, as I say, we don't often see. And I'm so glad they made that decision to, to put the registration there. So I'm gonna give you a, I'll, I'll give you a, a round robin tour of the model. I'll just bring it closer into the camera view and we'll spin her around nice and slowly for you to savor her beautiful lines. We've got forward pit visible. I'm gonna wrap around the nose. We don't have any fin numbers visible, but that's okay. She's she's an airline display model. She's not a current day high detail die cast. And look at the, uh, we've got the front integral air stair door hatchway there visible. That's kind of cool. So that was important for these airplanes. They would serve unimproved airstrips and remote airfields that didn't necessarily have all the ground handling equipment that the big airports had. So it was important to, uh, to configure these airplanes with self-support air stairs, integral air stairs. Now, on a Boeing 737-200, when you add in an integral air stair in the back and the front, if you have both with integral air stairs, you're adding a few thousand pounds of extra weight onto the aircraft, of course, and that decreases your payload capability on the aircraft, but it was required. I mean, places like Yellowknife, Norman Wells, Inuvik, uh, Joe Haven, Spence Bay, uh, Rankin Inlet, Callowit, these places uh, up until today, most of them do not, they're, they're outdoor operations with air stairs. So the fact that the airplanes actually were configured with their own air stairs was a real, was a real selling point and made the aircraft very, very useful to these airlines back in the day. But I'll point something out for those of you that aren't aware. If you have a look, there is a window here. In real life, what that means is there's no integral air stairs. The air stairs that were integral did not have the window. And of course the door would open, it would, it would fold downwards to the ramp. So that's how you can tell if the rear door of a 737 200 is uh, an integral air stair or just a, uh, a forward and backwards opening normal door. There's the tail. No damage on the tail, which is great to see. Often we can have, we can have various strikes and chips on the tail and our uh, stabs are also in really nice shape. Absolutely no damage at all on them, which is awesome. We continue spinning her around. Yeah, mustache looks beautiful. Now you can count on us. That was Pacific Western uh, Airlines logo, count on us in the early 1970s. And that is the full, ro full round robin tour on this, on this Boeing. 
Pacific Western's customer number was 275. So the Boeing delivered airplanes to Pacific Western were all 275 designation models. And they, most of them remained in service right through the 70s and into the 1980s when the company acquired CP Air and rebranded as Canadian Airlines International. So they did all these Boeings, most of them served for you know, 20 to 30 years in Canada, in Canada's harsh uh, operating environment. So what would a model like this be worth, you're, you're probably asking. Well, I can tell you uh, from my experience, uh, the Canadian models definitely have a very significant premium over their U.S. Uh, brothers and sisters. I don't know why, but they do. CP Air has a massive premium, uh, as, do, as would this, this model, Pacific Western Airlines. When you add in the fact that the model is in mint condition, um, I know for certain that the model uh, can sell for eight to $900 US all day long, seven days a week, 24 seven. It is uh, probably worth more than that. And the model will only appreciate why it's supply and demand. These models don't grow on trees. You just can't go to a, uh, a store and say, I'll have uh, three Pacific Western Airlines, 1960, uh, 1968737s, please, uh, pack them to go. Uh, you can't find them. They're literally uh, what you find sitting beside the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah, so there you have it. This model is really, really a beautiful piece, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I would ask if you have enjoyed this film, perhaps you can click the like button. Double two solid thumbs up would be very much appreciated. Did you ever fly on Pacific Western? Did you ever fly on these aircraft? I'd love to hear your stories. Please do leave comments. I love seeing people's comments in these uh, videos. So that would be awesome. And if you haven't already, the subscription button, that's the red button in the lower right hand corner, click it because then you'll get a notification every time I post a video to uh, the YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch live as I present the model and you can join the live question and answer session where we present the video and, and answer questions and talk about the models as the videos are presented live on YouTube. So that's a fun thing. So be sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. So thank you very much for checking in. Thank you for watching the video. Bon voyage, happy travels, and we'll see you on the next edition of Model Moment.